Unless you land a knockout or a submission, MMA results are in the hands of the umpires. And while they are professionals, they don't always get it right. That's why we've compiled the top 10 most controversial judging decisions in UFC history. Why is one of Michael Bisbing's wins shrouded in controversy? And how did one fight lead to Nick Diaz retiring? Stay tuned because all that and more is coming right up. At number 10, BJ Penn versus Frankie Edgar at UFC 41. When BJ Penn took on Kalo Uno at UFC 41, he was moving into the prime of his career. He had taken out Matt Serra to earn the right to fight for the lightweight championship belt against Uno. And that was good news because Penn had knocked out Uno two years before in just 11 seconds. While the rematch didn't end with a knockout, it was pure domination from Penn. Every time the fight went to the ground, Uno was fighting to survive. Penn had almost total control throughout the fight, but the judges didn't agree. For some reason, they scored the contest a draw. Penn moved up to welterweight after that to fight and had to wait almost five years to win the lightweight championship, but that's when he made his mark on the sport and entered the UFC Hall of Fame. Next is Lyoto Machida versus Mauricio Hua at UFC 104. In 2009, the champion of the light heavyweight division was Lyoto Machida. That was until Mauricio Shogun Hua came along. When they fought at UFC 104, Shogun took the fight to the champion like no one had before. His Muay Thai kicking and striking looked to be a class above Machida. After the judges unanimously announced that Machida had won the contest, there was outrage. What seemed to be at issue was whether kicks are enough to win MMA. May fights. The UFC gave Shogun a quick rematch, and that time he left no doubt, knocking out Machida in the very first round. And now Tyrone Woodley versus Jake Shields at UFC 161. When Woodley was a fresh young star in the UFC, he was tipped to be the next big thing. In his first fight, he scored a stunning knockout of Jay Huron, and, and fans were excited to see what he had in store for his next opponent, Jake Shields. They faced off at UFC 161, and Woodley failed to bring the same punching power that he did in his first fight, but he still outstruck and outfought Shields based on every metric. Over three rounds, the judges baffled score the contest in Shields' favor. It was an early and unnecessary speed bump in his rise up to eventually claiming the welterweight championship belt. Next on our list is Boss Rutten versus Kevin Randleman at UFC 20. Back in 1999, UFC was a totally different competition. It was before the promotion was bought by Frank and Lorenzo Fertitta. There was one 15-minute round, and judges would then judge the entire contest on that. If needed, there could be a total of four minutes of overtime. That year, the heavyweight title fight between Boss Rutten and Kevin Randleman was a clash of styles. Randleman ended up proving that his wrestling was just too much for Rutten for most of the fight, and was able to ground and pound his way to a certain victory. Well, it was certain before the judges got involved, the judges sent the fight to the overtime period and then somehow awarded the win to Boss Rutten, despite the Dutchman taking much more damage. And now we have Nick Lentz versus Tyson Griffin at UFC 123. At UFC 123, most MMA fans were rooting for Tyson Griffin to get the better of Nick Lentz. Lentz was seen as a boring fighter, and Griffin managed to outstrike Lentz to hype up the crowd. On top of that, he tried to guarantee a victory with some heavy slams and strong wrestling, but the judges said no and gave it to Lentz. It wasn't a huge fight, so it doesn't normally get remembered in UFC history, but it was still a shocking decision for everyone that remembers it. Next at number 5, Sean Shirk versus Evan Dunham at UFC 119. Evan Dunham was in fine form coming into UFC 119. 11 wins in a row with 7 via submission and 2 by knockout. On the other side of the octagon, Sean Shirk was 37 years old and would end up retiring after the event. And it's not hard to see why. Dunham almost finished Shirk numerous times through heavy hits and near submission, but as you can probably guess by its inclusion, in this list, Dunham didn't get the win that night. The judges gave it to Shirk in a split decision that made the crowd furious. Maybe it was a retirement present for Shirk from the UFC. And now we have Matt Hamill versus Michael Bisbing at UFC 75. Homegrown advantage is a big deal in most sports, and it's not different for MMA. With fighters coming from all over the world, having the support of locals can make all the difference. That's what happened for Michael Bisbing at UFC 75 when he had a showdown with Matt Hamill in London. Even though Hamill seemed to dominate at least the first three rounds, when the names were read out at the end of the contest, it was Michael Bisbing's hand being lifted for the win. Even the home crowd seemed to believe that something had gone wrong, with many boos and jeers coming in Bisbing's direction. Sitting at number 3, Carlos Condit versus Nick Diaz at UFC 143. Once upon a time, Nick Diaz was the most exciting fighter in the UFC. Just like his brother Nate, Nick had a loyal fan base who went to war for him. So when a judge's decision didn't go in his favor in a tight contest, they weren't happy. The fight in question was against Carlos Condit in 2012. Nick had been tearing through the welterweight division at Strike Force, where he became the champion. And his first fight in the UFC went smoothly too. He beat BJ Penn in a unanimous decision and established himself as one of the most dangerous in the division. That's why he matched up with Carlos Condit for the interim title to see who would go on to face the champion, Georges St. Pierre. With a lot on the line, Nick pushed forward and took the fight to Condit. In response, Condit's strategy was to land counter strikes and play a numbers game. Stats after the match showed that Condit did land more strikes. The question was, how many were more significant? The judges scored unanimously in favor of Condit, but Nick didn't accept it. After the fight, he said, I pushed him back the whole fight. I got the takedown. I think I'm done with this MMA. It turned out that he wasn't quite done and ended up fighting another three times in the UFC, but it wasn't the end of Diaz's winning streak, and clearly, he lost some faith in the sport. Next is Georges St. Pierre versus Johnny Hendricks at UFC 167. GSP was on the verge of retirement by the time of UFC 
UFC 167, and his fight against Johnny Hendricks would be his second last. It was his ninth straight title defense, but it didn't go as smoothly as he would have liked. Hendricks was the stronger fighter in the first two rounds, and so it looked like he only needed one more to take the title. GSP was able to come back and take the third and fifth rounds, but in round four, Hendricks dominated with a grounded pound masterclass. Hendricks had been throwing some brutal strikes at GSP throughout the fight, and the Canadian even asked in his corner at some point which round it was. So as the final bell rang, fans and commentators expected a new welterweight champion in Johnny Hendricks. But when the results were announced, only one judge awarded the contest to Hendricks. The other two gave it to Georges St. Pierre, which surprised everyone, partly because of the damage he had taken that night. GSP announced that he would be retiring from the sport. In a press conference right after the fight, he said that Hendricks was the hardest puncher he had ever experienced, and that he couldn't keep putting his body through it. The fact that he took such a beating and still walked out of the match with a win is why it was so controversial. Even St. Pierre knew that he lost. And at number one, Matt Hamill versus John Jones at 2009. Most considered John Jones to be one of the greatest fighters that the UFC has ever seen. He has been virtually unbeatable in his 12 years of MMA, but he doesn't have a perfect record, and that's because of his fight against Matt Hamill during the Ultimate Fighter heavyweight finale. John Jones had a massive reach advantage over Hamill, but he still preferred to take him to the ground. Halfway through the first round, Jones had already trapped Hamill while he pummeled him with strikes from above. The ground and pound was so brutal that at one point, Jones looked up to the referee Steve Mazzagatti to get him to stop the fight, but he didn't. And as the onslaught continued, Jones hit him with some elbows, which was when Mazzagatti stepped in. Elbows were allowed, but what are known as 12 to 6 elbows that came directly down were not. So, Mazzagatti breaks the fight up and checks to see if Hamill can continue, who looks to be bleeding from his eyes. So, they stop the fight. Everybody assumed that Jones had won the fight until the judges announced that he had been disqualified for illegal elbows. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in the next one.